Welcome to Transforming Lives with Dr. Leah. Dr. Leah Mutale is an author, Bible-believing ordained minister of the gospel, entrepreneur, life coach, medical doctor, mentor, mother, strategy policy analyst, and visionary leader. In this podcast, she discusses her book, Transform to Transform Zambia. Episode 6, Chapter 5. Preparation. Once you have figured out where you're coming from and where you need to be in terms of your purpose, begin to affirm it. Create a vision board showing in pictorial form where it is you want to be. Talk about it as often as opportunity allows. It is important to have a clear-cut vision of where you want to be. But before you move forward to change anything in your life, it's important to assess where you are now. Look critically at your studies, your job, your career, your finances, your spirituality, your physical health, your relationships, your personality, your gifts and talents. What relationships in your life need nurturing and which ones need to be dropped? You must realize that for every part of your journey in life, There will be people who will walk with you for a reason and a season. Be careful not to prolong any relationship beyond its usefulness. Secondly, you need to have faith and believe in yourself. Faith is an important ingredient to a successful life. The Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Once you are clear about your God-given purpose, You need to believe it and know beyond doubt that you can do it or you can become it. Thirdly, you should have a positive mindset. Always see and feel success, happiness, joy, peace, health and wealth deliberately. Make a conscious decision to see life from a more positive point. Have an attitude of gratitude. Think about good things and you attract more good in your life. Fourthly, make decisions and act now. Stop procrastinating. You need to make decisions. If we don't make decisions, we will be at one place for a very long time. Make the decision, even if it may not be the right one. It shows confidence. If you make a wrong turn, you should admit your mistake, correct it, and move on. Finally, leave the past behind but learn from it. The Bible tells us clearly, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit to service in the kingdom of God. Luke 9.62 The past is past. If we hold on to the painful memories of the past years, they will anchor us to the same place and we will not progress. Have a free mind. No unforgiveness, no grudges, and no evil thoughts. Unforgiveness is a terrible disease that attacks you, not the person you are angry at. If you make a mistake today, correct it, repent, and move on. This is Transforming Lives with Dr. Leah. Good evening. Welcome to Transforming Lives with Dr. Leah. Tonight, we are on chapter five, preparation. This is episode six, and we've been having a very, very detailed discussion regarding this rather, uh, you know, small book that you can read in one sitting. And if you haven't read the book, what you had at the beginning of this episode is an abridged version of chapter five. Dr. Leah, good evening. Good evening, Brian. Again, we are at your home. It's beautiful out here. (laughs) Perfect weather tonight. First things first, Doc. uh, What's what's behind this chapter? What prompted this particular chapter talking about preparation? Well, before you begin anything um, in life, um, you're supposed to prepare. You can't go on a journey without preparing. Obviously, if you want to travel to go somewhere, you make Mm. sure your car is in order. You make sure you have enough fuel. You know, you basically have to prepare. 
Um, in this chapter, really, I'm looking at people who who might have felt like they failed. Um, mm-hmm. So this gives them an opportunity to say, look, I could start again. So let me go back and prepare. So the chapter mm-hmm. really tries to help us prepare to go forward. That's right. Yeah. Uh, right in the second in the second paragraph of this chapter, you talk about the SWOT analysis, the SWOT analysis. Yes. Um, what What's that? What were you trying to say regarding SWOT analysis? What is a SWOT analysis on the personal level like this? Yeah, so basically, um, you're sitting down and thinking through in terms of what your strengths are, let's say to the S, what is it that I have? Um, what 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 am I equipped with? Okay, and then you look at the opportunities around you, mm. or your weaknesses. Secondly, mm. what what am I weak in? What is it that I can strengthen mm. in myself? And then what opportunities lie around me mm. that I can um, take advantage of? And then of course the threats. What are the threats? So basically, we do this for organizations and for other things like team building and things like that, but you can do it at a personal level. Yes, that's right. So you could sit down and just sit down and write and think through, what am I strong at? What are my strengths? What is it that I have? You know, but what are my weaknesses on the other hand? That's right. And then what are my opportunities and threats? And you knowing those, then you're able to see what can cover what. Because once you know them, then it's easier to to know how you can take advantage of an opportunity. Yeah. Don't, don't people just go into someone as an idea, they jump and, and try to execute it without really checking? Is that what that sort of analysis is talking yeah, about? Usually, usually that's what we do. We, we, we think of an idea and then boom, I want to do it without sitting down to think that, okay, even if I want to do this, yes, I, I can to a certain extent, mm-hmm. but then what, what are my weaknesses? Who else do I need to pull in? Or what else do I need to do in order for me to do this thing? Mm-hmm. And then what opportunities are there out there mm-hmm. that could help me do this thing? Mm-hmm. But then again, what are the threats? So we need to understand all this, even at a personal level. So let's say someone discovers what their strength is, mm-hmm. and they realize, OK, I'm gifted in one particular area. What mm-hmm. do they do now? What am I supposed to do with identifying my, my talent, my gift, my strength? Well, once you identify your talent, your gift, then I would, I would encourage you to improve on it. Um, you see, basically, when you look at the education system, what we do is normally is we go to school to study something, okay, mm-hmm. and then um, try to, I don't know what word to use, but to, to enact that thing when it's supposed to be the opposite. I should have the gift, mm. and then what education should do is to polish the gift. That's right. Yeah. So, but then we normally would do it the other way around. So, for me, once you know your strength, then it's easier for you to look at what can I do to improve on this strength. Mm. I mean, m- most people depend on academic documents. I mean, you can go there and say, I'm this, I can do this, I can do that. The first thing they'll ask you is, oh, where's your diploma? Or where's your degree? Or where's your mm. So obviously, you want to put some technical something to it, mm. to the gift, because that's what the world wants. That's what that's the world right. is looking for. That's right. So um, I think, yes, with your strength, you can do something in order for you to be qualified according yes. to the world. Yes. OK, fantastic. So what about the W is weaknesses? So if I discover my weaknesses, what now? That doesn't that just make me feel discouraged or maybe just let me just give up after all I, I don't have no it should, it, should, it, it shouldn't do that I think once you've got your strengths that's why we started with the strengths you have your weaknesses what what that does then is help you find out what do I do to improve on this weakness is my weakness being impatient is it procrastination mm-hmm. is it laziness, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are all those weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So you can improve on them. You can just decide and say to yourself, okay, I can stop this, you know? Remember, you can change a habit in 21 days. Mm -hmm. So if you decide, okay, because um, my weakness is sleeping late, okay, let me change it. And try to do it for 21 days. Within 21 days, we hope you will have changed. So you have, it has to be deliberate. 
these things you don't just dream them and then they happen. Mm -hmm. It has to be deliberate. It's an effort mm -hmm. that you have to make. That's so right. you don't ignore your weaknesses. Why? Why you want to know them is to see what you can do to improve them. Mm -hmm. You might even need somebody to help you. Mm -hmm. So once I've identified that, okay, my weakness is this, then I can pull in a person who can help me. That's where we bring in mentorship. Mm -hmm. That's where we bring in friends, mm -hmm. pastors, mm -hmm. whoever it is you think can help you resolve a particular weakness. Yes. That's right. Uh, you also talk about relationships. Maybe you identify that you, you don't have you don't you don't have a strength in accounting. So maybe you need other people. Yeah, you, obviously. You now leverage. You see, that's where now relationships are important. Mm. Networking is important. Mm. Mentorship is important. If I have a weakness in something and I know that another person has a strength in that, I can then relate with this person so that this person can help me in my weakness. Mm. So relationships are important. Networks are important. And most importantly, mentors. Okay, so opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing a sort of analysis. What, where, how do I identify opportunities? In, I mean, I mean, let's say I've got an idea to, to start rearing pigs. I know I've got strength uh, in, in maybe in, in, in farming or in livestock and whatever. And maybe I have dealt with my weaknesses. I know I can. I need other people. I can leverage mm -hmm. oh, opportunities. Where does that come? Well, what am I looking at in terms of opportunities? What, what's the idea? Well, basically, opportunities are such that um, it's possible that you could have a piece of land that your father owns. That's an opportunity to do something on that land. You could have a friend or a relative who's already in that business. So it's an opportunity to partner with them. So opportunities are there in different ways and different forms. Um, but usually the opportunities are there. But many a times uh, we shy away from them because we think we can't. You see, sometimes um, we look at something and think, oh my God, this is too big, I can't do it. But that's the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You have to take that step of faith in order for you to do it. That's right. Yeah. Threats. What about threats? The threats are there. They're always there. I mean, there's always the threat to do, to fail. Yeah. I won't make it. They'll laugh at me. What will they think? You know, and most of those, um, it's, it's because of the outside, the environment mm -hmm. that you're in. Who are you talking to? Who are you living with? What are you listening to? Mm -hmm. You know, because then that's where the threats come from. It's from what you see, what you hear, you know. So, Make sure you, 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 if you want to, if you want to grow, if you want to transform, work with the people that you want to be like. Okay, That's don't right. don't work with the people who are not what you want to be. Don't work with the chickens. Yes, don't work with the chickens. So, so with, with the, the eagles. eagles. So that's a threat in itself. If you are going to look at another person and compare yourself, it's a threat in itself. So you must be confident also in yourself. Remember in the beginning of the book we talked about purpose. We talked about knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. And once you know you, who you are and that strength that you have, mm -hmm. then can overcome the threat. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Welcome back. That's right. Yeah. Um, let's talk about people now, because in preparation there's a place you. I think this is just uh, the third part where you talk about people, understanding who you should draw and who you should stick with. How important is being choosy? Mm. In relationship, how important is that in as you prepare to you know to, to, to transform and to launch out in, into some big ideas that you may have? Um, there's this saying that goes, I can't even remember who said it. Um, if you want to go, if you want to reach fast, go alone. But if you want to reach far, go with others. So you have to choose the people you go with. Once you've identified who you are, you know who you belong to and who you can hang with. Mm. Because there are some toxic relationships. Right. There are people who you sit with for 30 minutes, you are drained. Why? Because they take from you. They don't give back to you.
So you have to weigh these things. You know, yes. there's nothing wrong with with um, unfriending someone on Facebook mm-hmm. if they're if, if if you think they're negative energy. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with, with telling a friend. You know what? I think for now, you know, um, you know, let's mm-hmm. just stay apart. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that because mm-hmm. who you associate with is very very important. Mm-hmm. Can either build you or break you. It's true. Um, a lot of us are very weak in, 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 in that area of, of relationships because we like our friends, but, but they are takers. They literally just take and take and take. And if you really do an audit, they really not give. They only give you negative energy exactly. or even bad habits. They, exactly. Maybe they're even the door to bad habits. Exactly. And, and so what you're saying is you drop them. Yeah, you drop so, them. So, so it's a sacrifice, isn't it? It is a sacrifice. You know, the walk to success is a sacrifice. It's painful. Mm. You lose friends, you lose money. Mm. There's so much that you lose along the way because of the choices that you have to make. Mm. Some of the choices are very difficult. Mm. You know, sometimes you've had to walk, I've had to walk away from a job, a well-paying job, Mm. because I needed to make that choice for me to go into a certain direction. The job was nice, the money was good. Mm -hmm. But because my direction was this and the job was taking me there, Mm -hmm. I had to drop the job. But people around you won't understand. You know, you'll get all these people saying all sorts of things, but then don't Mm -hmm. listen. Focus on where it is you want to go. Mm -hmm. That is what is important. So now let's let's talk about um, faith. What role does, you know, your spirituality and, and, and your dependency on God and God on God's word, what, what role does that play in, in this level of preparation we're talking about? Well, first of all, I think faith is the most important. You can't do anything without faith. Even taking a seat on that chair, you had faith. Mm, that it won't you break. had faith that it won't <laughs> break, so you sat down. So everything you do includes faith. So if I want to start a project or do anything, I have to believe, I have to have faith that it will happen. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, then why do I start? So faith is really the engine. It's the fuel for you to get to where you're going. Because without faith, it's impossible. Because we don't seem like we'll be what we want to be, isn't it? Yeah. You have to see things that are not as though they are. Yes. You see, that's why I talked somewhere in the book, in the next chapter, about a vision board. Mm-hmm. You must visualize, you must see where you're going. Mm-hmm. Because if you can't see where you're going, how are you going to get there? And how how will you know you've arrived? Mm-hmm. And then what what makes you see where you're going? It's faith. You right now as you look around there might be nothing that looks like it. Mm-hmm. But within you you have the faith that I will get there. Mm-hmm. Positive mindset. Yes. Positive mindset. A lot of us go into, there's something I, I wrote some time back, a lot of us we go into business with an overabundance of ignorance. And part of that ignorance is just not knowing that you have to have a positive mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, positivity, is, is it natural? Mm-hmm. Is it something you have to build? Well, I wish it was natural. <laughs> <laughs> it's something you need to build. That's why I said, you see, everything is an effort. Success is an effort. You can't just sit there and think I'm going to be successful because... Mm. No, it's an effort. It's a mindset change. Mm. You have to keep thinking positive. Yes, bad things happen. But you have to get up. Each time it happens, you have to get up and start again. And hope and pray that this time around, I'm going to make it. Mm. We don't promise you success in in the first time you do it. But then keep doing it. Eventually, you will succeed. Yes. That faith will keep you going. You know, there's a scripture that says, rejoice. And again, yes. I say rejoice. And there are, there are people who discount the Bible as not being a motivational book, but it is the real, not the fake motivation. We see with motivation speakers around, mm-hmm. the Bible is the real because it says, rejoice. Rejoice. And then it's, the Bible also says that uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Is my strength. I, mean, I would like us to delve into joy, into positivity, into gratitude, into those positive energies. How 
how important that they and which energies can you can you point at said maybe this and that that are important when you wake up in the morning as you pursue your dream what what energies do you want to build when you wake up in the morning um, you wake up with gratitude first of all you walk in <laughs> that's already mm. a plus yes, yes. because many others probably Maybe didn't wake up. up so you wake up with an attitude of gratitude and i think through the course of the day i think it's important to keep thinking positive thoughts whether they are thoughts about another person or thoughts about other things they need to be positive it's dangerous to always think oh my god if i go there then this bad thing is going to happen or oh, no why are you thinking like that why should it have to be bad so think positive mm-hmm. think good things about yourself mm-hmm. and about everybody else because mm-hmm. you are beautiful Mm-hmm. You know, God made you beautiful, and God said, you know, He has a good plan for you. Yes. He has a plan to prosper you, yeah. to give you a hope and, and the a future. future. Mm-hmm. So, how about listening to those scriptures and just repeating them? Even if you repeat one scripture the whole day, it's good enough. And keep that joy bubbling. Mm-hmm. You know, you are better off watching a comedy than a horror. Yes. You know, sit there that's and laugh your head off. That's that's you know? good advice, right yeah. there. Bonus advice. Watch comedy, not horror. Not horror. <laughs> you know, laugh your head off. Yeah. You know, positive energy. And that brings you because the more positive energy you have, the more positive you attract. Yes. Good things begin to happen to you. You you can just just take a look at your life. When you wake up in the morning and you are grumpy and you are angry and you are complaining, the whole day is gonna be bad. Mm-hmm. Because you are attracting negative energy. Yeah. So instead of tears of joy, I would rather. Laughing pain, right? Yeah, you know what I mean. So you wake up in the morning and you are, you are. <laughs> yes, maybe you're broke or whatever it is wrong with you, you. But you wake up in the morning and you're singing and you're dancing and you're yeah. laughing and you're good morning everybody and you're smiling and as you go on, wow. you're attracting good things. And yeah. you see, funny enough, the whole day you see positivity mm. around you. So it is important to have that mindset, that heart of love and kindness mm. and joy and peace. Mm. Very important. Yes. Peace is another energy. Peace. Peace. You know, God God outlines all these energies in the Bible, doesn't He? Yes. Peace. Gratitude. Joy. Peace. Joy. Yes. Giving. Yes. Maybe let's talk about giving because it's a great source of energy that we underestimate. Yes, we do. He who do. who blesses is greater than the one who has been blessed. Yes. Yeah. So, so giving so brings joy. Yes. It must bring joy. Yes. That's why uh, we are asked to sow your seed in joy. Don't yes. sow your seed grumpy. Mm. You sow your seed in joy. So giving must make you feel happy. You know, it's it's a nice feeling like, you mm. know, oh, I gave that person something. Yeah. They needed it. Yeah. And you gave it away. So that feeling of joy, you know, of giving, of peace. Peace mm. is important. That's why um when you have any beef with anybody or your sister, your brother, try to make peace. Yes. If it means saying sorry, just say yes. so. It won't cost you anything, mm. but it will give you a peace that nothing else can give. You, you say in the book that don't dwell on negativity. No, don't, don't. It's pay off his negativity, isn't it? It's like wh- what people don't understand. What we don't understand sometimes is that when you're when you're upset with someone or you you're not happy with something, uh, it's like you're taking poison and expecting the that other person want to, to die. die. Yeah. yeah. So for as long as you are angry about that person and you are not forgiving, you are not letting go, they are going on with their lives, right? But you are not. You are stuck with this thing. So you are better off letting go, let go of it and move on. Otherwise, you anchor yourself and you won't move ahead. This is transforming lives with Dr. Leah. We'll be right back. Info at transformwithdrlea.com. Welcome back. Philippians says, you know, it outlines the things that we need to think about. Yes. Things that are of a good report. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Positivity. Positivity. Let's talk about decision making. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a very important one. Yes. A lot of people fear to make decisions. Mm-hmm. And for as long as you don't make the decision, you are stagnant. Mm. Cuz you don't make the decision. Imagine you are at a crossroad. You have to go right or left. 
So if you don't make the decision, you will be standing there until you go, <laughs> until you make the decision. Yes. Um, sometimes you could make the wrong decision, and there's really nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. because we do make wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. But you can go back and correct it. Because last time you made the decision, it was wrong. So now you know better, so you make the right decision. But you must make the decision. What stops us from making decisions? Fear. Fear of failure? Many times it's fear of failure. Um, it's what will the people say. You know, we're too much about what will the yes. people yes. say. Yes. You are the most important person to yourself. Yes. What will Leah say? Yes. To Leah. Yes. Not why Paul Brian said. Mm. Mm. I should care about me. Yes. That's true. Well, of course, the overall picture is God Himself. But mm. then the Bible says, love one another. I can't give what I don't have. But, Doc, um, even God regards us, doesn't He? Because if you remember, Moses, mm. He says, What do you see? Yes, yes. Uh, even Elijah, He asks him, Is it, is it Elijah? Uh, it's. it's, it's, it's it's um, Isaiah. He asks him again, "What do you see?" So it's it's not like, you know, even God regards our opinions or what we think what we matters. Think. Sometimes in, uh, we really care too much about what other people, other think, people think. But God is asking us, mm -hmm. "What do you see? What do you think? What, what, what what's your opinion on this?" Yes. Not what other people. Yeah, think. But that's all. That's all got to do with knowing who you are. Mm. Because when you don't know who you are, you allow other people. You are moved by other people's opinions. But when you know who you are, you can stand and say, no, 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 no. This is what I'm going to do. This is my direction. Mm. I don't really care what you think, but this is what I think, and this is what is right for me in that moment. Mm. But then a lot of people fear to do that because I'm going to hurt her, mm. I'm going to hurt him. <laughs> Come on. It's about you. Mm. At the end of the day, it sounds selfish. Yeah. But then that's what gets you going. That is what will make you. And probably those people we think will look at us funny when we make a decision, they might even benefit more from us making those decisions. Exactly. And then maybe they don't want you to make it because they don't want you to succeed. Mm. Remember, it's not everybody yes. who wants you to succeed. Yes. So you have to be very careful. They'll come to you with counsel and tell you how don't do that, you know, you can't make it and you you know, and then you decide to believe yes, them yes. instead of believing yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you know in your heart that I can do this, you do it. And we are creators, aren't we? Of course we are. So we whatever are. we say we will do, it's doable. Exactly. No one We're created in the image of God. And God is a creator. He spoke things into existence. So so can you. But doesn't the past also have an impact. I mean, we had the experiences of failure, didn't we? So, because of that, maybe we feel that yeah, we so that's, failed so, so that's why we need to, to prepare. We need to start over. You see, life is about starting over. You know? We can't keep doing the things we did before and hope for a new result. We have to start over. You messed up. Who did it? We all messed up. But at some point, we have to start over. So you decide. It's a decision. Again, we're back to the decision. You decide. Now I'm going to start again. I'm starting over. I Forget won't do it like that. that. Yes, it happened. It was wrong. I'm sorry about it. Whoever I hurt, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm moving on. Because if you don't do that, you will stay in the same place. Failure is like manure, right? It's either you die complaining about how bad it smells, or you use, or you use it, it to grow. To, yeah. yeah. See, it, 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 like this scripture that you quote here, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. But that is almost like the most common thing, isn't it? Like we, we, we just can't... We judge ourselves. Yeah, we, we can't just let go. Of no, us. we can't. We, we, we find it very difficult too. But then for me, the, 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 the treatment, the healing comes from letting go. Mm -hmm. If you can let go of the past, forgive yourself. Mm. There are many times we can forgive others, it's so easy. Oh, but yes. we fail to forgive ourselves. So, first of all, forgive yourself. You know, mm. I made the mistake, and after all, Christ died on the cross. And forgive your sin already. So, forgive yourself and move on.
So unforgiveness is bad if you are holding it against another person, but we don't see how bad it is when you're holding, holding it against, it against yourself. ourselves. Yes. So preparation, let's recap from yeah. where we started from. So preparation basically is we're talking about, first of all, we talked about where we're coming from, we're talking about who we are. You know, once we've identified all those things, then we begin to think of preparing. And when we're preparing, we look at the SWOT analysis. Okay, so what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What opportunities do I have? Look around. You know, what connections do I have that grant me the opportunities? What threats are there that I can deal with? Okay? And um, as you move on from there, then you begin to look at what about the relationships I have. Which ones are beneficial? Who do I drag on with me? Or who do I leave? There was Abraham and Lot. Mm-hmm. Abraham kept dragging up along with him. Yes. You know. So you need to get to a point where you say, no, 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 I think this relationship is toxic. Yes. It's not benefiting me. Mm-hmm. And you leave it. And you continue to move on. Make decisions. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do about this thing? You know it is a problem. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow, from tomorrow onwards, I will stop doing this or I will do this. Make the decision and move on. And leave the past. In the past, that's why it's called the past. Yeah. Wow, so that's that's so profound, Doc. It's very, very profound. And, and I think my takeaway mm-hmm. from this chapter is on knowing who to drop in terms of relationships. Which people are just merely takers. They're taking your energy. They're just taking from you. And they're not adding value. The value that you need, especially in that moment, yes. as you're preparing and trying to transform and trying to go to another level in life, mm. there are people that just are like heavy luggage. They're just keeping you down. You know? It's just to decide. And, and, and also recognizing that that is not an easy thing to do. It's a sacrifice. Yes. Because some people that we have to leave behind are friends we have known mm. for 20, 30 years. They are, yeah, they are relatives that we love so dearly, but, 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 but they've been holding us back. So maybe it's time to give them transport money so they can go. <laughs> so they can catch the bus. They can and catch the bus <laughs> and, and, and then you move into your next, into your next place in life. Yeah. So thank you so much once again for sharing. And like we, all, we always end until, until the next episode. Thank you www.transformwithdrleah.com